Hello, YouTubers. Thanks for checking in on my channel. Uh, I have a project in mind, and I want it to to use some uh, some lighting uh, as an indicator of its status. And we'll get to that later on in another video. But this is uh, what I think I'm going to do for part of it. I wanted. I knew I wanted a a breathing, uh, pulsing light show like this just just breathing on and off like that instead of just blinking uh, just because I think it would look cooler and uh, so this is an experiment to to get that to happen uh, this is the uh, you probably recognize that the MSP 430 launch pad I, I had one of those laying around I've been meaning to play with and in it is the MSP 430 G2211, the 2211 that comes with it. Um, been meaning to sit down and experiment with that thing for a long time and finally found an excuse to do it. So, uh, what I've done here is uh, set it up for pulse width modulation output. Uh, I started with a code example of uh, that, that is in the TI programming tools and uh, read up on how the PWM works and how the timer inside that chip works and how to get it to use interrupts. I wanted my code to use interrupts because I need, uh, I need it to, to trigger on events that happen uh, in this, this uh, exercise here. Now, pulse width modulation, I'm just varying the duty cycle. Well, my code actually is just varying the duty cycle of the pulse width output there uh, to drive these LEDs. That's, that's how I make them breathe like that. And you can see that on the scope over here. Uh, there we go. So it varies from almost zero to almost 100%. Gets to the top, turns around, takes it back down, just in an endless circle like that. And uh, it's all interrupt driven, just, just incrementing and decrementing numbers keeping track of the, the status of uh, where the count currently is. Move it up or down. When we get to the top, turn it around. When we get to the bottom, turn it around and just keep going. Uh, so I'll I publish the code on my website, jerrypalmer.com, and uh, you can take a look at it there. So sorry if this doesn't look great, but I thought we should run through this code. I'll show you how it works. Um, just to find some constants up here at the top. Uh, the uh, interval, uh, we'll get to that shortly, but um, how often it updates, uh, how often it applies the step interval here of 5 uh, to count up or down, the lower limit, the upper limit, those, those values there and the direction of the count. Uh, then we'll get into our main function. Uh, initialize the chip, set the turn the watchdog timer off, set the uh, the CPU clock to the, the low frequency because we don't need a whole lot of power, uh, a lot of horsepower for this. Uh, pin two, uh, 1.2 they call it. Um, I guess that would be pin th three in four doesn't matter uh, port one dot two for my output uh, and uh, select there's a timer option you can set there uh, then we start playing with the timer registers this uh, is capture control register zero for timer a uh, set a ceiling for uh, the PWM period so that's how 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 what it's Excuse me. That's what the timer is going to count up to uh, before it turns, uh, before it stops, resets to zero, and starts counting again from zero up to 1,024 minus one, 1,023. So that puts the timer in the mode of just counting up from zero to 1,023, uh, and then stop, uh, reset, start at zero again, count back up, zero, count back up, and just loops. Okay. Uh, output mode seven. Uh, pretty interesting. Look at the uh, MSP four thirty uh, family users guide 
for more info on that, you can manipulate the output uh, that I'm getting on, on this pin 1.2. Uh, when the uh, uh, when the timer is counting, it uh, can set and reset the outputs uh, that you see on those pins. And in in mode seven here, it'll count up to this level. Let's uh, look at this next line here. Timer A zero. Uh, capture compare register 1 we set to 10 okay so in mode 7 the timer starts counting from 0 it's gonna hit this value 10 in register 1 and when it gets there the uh, mode 7 tells it to reset the output on that pin too. So uh, let's say there are output pins goes high when we when we start counting. Uh, we're on our way to 1020, 23. Uh, the pin is high. We're going to hit this value. Out mode seven tells it to toggle that output low again. Okay, so that makes. That, that basically means that this is the, the pulse width modulation duty cycle. So we're going to count up to 10 instead of all the way. It's going to keep counting. I know this is confusing. It's going to keep counting all the way up, but at 10, the output's going to go low from high. Okay, just keep that in mind. Uh, continuing to set up the timer here, we're going to use the uh, uh, this, this particular clock source, SM clock. Uh, internal to the chip, we're going to use, uh, uh, we're not going to divide, this is just a, a divisor of one, uh, so one to one clock speed, you can divide that, use that, uh, different settings of that to divide the clock speed down if you want a slower frequency. This is to enable, uh, the timer interrupts, okay, so, uh, more on that in a second, and then at the end of our main function, we... Uh, start uh, we, we put our CPU into low power mode 1 uh, and we turn on uh, the in general interrupts general interrupt enable so it's the CPU is listening for interrupts from the rest of its peripheral from all the peripherals including the timer that we're working on and then this is our uh, interrupt vector uh, it's just a, a function you, you declare your interrupt vector and here is your interrupt function so whenever uh, we get an interrupt from the timer we know something has happened in the timer uh, and in this case timer A1 vector means when we hit the value set in uh, uh, if you can see that set in this value here, capture control register one. When we hit that value, in this case we're starting at 10, when we hit 10, it throws an interrupt and calls this function. So we can service that interrupt. So when we hit 10, we're gonna look at what direction we're counting. We're gonna keep track of that with static integer, a, st a static variable. Uh, we're gonna start counting, we're gonna, st we're gonna start, uh, start by counting down so let's just set those up. Static uh, and divider zero is going to be the number of times we we call this function, and that has to do with uh, that constant we set at the top div interval, right? So we only want to execute this code here. We only want to execute this block of code every div interval. Uh, in this case, set to 300. So every every 300th interrupt that is thrown. That's when we want to uh, do this stuff and change. We're going to change the value of timer A, capture, compare, register 1. Uh, if, it's, if it's greater than 10 and we're counting down, then decrement by step interval, which we had set to 5. If it's uh, 
greater than 1020, that should actually be upper limit, which is what we have it set to. Uh, and we're, uh, we're set to count up, then uh, increment by five step interval. Uh, so we're just we're manipulating the the register values. These these capture control register one. We're just changing that. So the next time uh, the thing runs, it's going to start. You know, it's going to come back. the The counter is going to reset to zero and start counting up, and it's going to hit this value in register one. The next time it'll be fifteen, and the next time it'll be twenty. The next time it'll be twenty five, and so on, all the way up to. Uh, upper limit until it hit up, hits upper limit uh, of 1,020 uh, is what that constant set to. Then, uh, then it's going to reverse direction. It's going to change direction to down. Uh, same thing if it's counting down and it hits lower limit, it's going to set direction to whoops up so that uh, it just turns around and starts counting up instead of down or down instead of up. And then, of course, uh, reset our uh, count of the number of times the interrupt service request has been run. And uh, otherwise, just increment divider uh, so we, we know how many times we've run. If we get to 300 times, then we want to run the, uh, the count up the, uh, the manipulations to register 1. So each time the thing runs, or, or every 300th time the thing runs, it's going to change the value that we count to before this interrupt is thrown. So the interrupt is going to get thrown uh, a longer and longer period is going to go by before it counts up to that value and an interrupt is thrown. That's That's how it... It varies the time that the uh, it varies the duty cycle, excuse me, of this pulse width, and you get the breathing effect. So I know this is uh, this is pretty poor uh, TV looking at code and having me stammer and, and uh, try to explain how it works, but I've uh, I've put it up on my site with uh, with pretty good comments. So have a look there, download it play with it, change these values around. You'll see that if you change the value of those constants up at the top, you can get uh, longer, uh, you know, slower pulses and faster pulses, and uh, you can dim them down halfway or only, or only bring them up halfway, uh, whatever you want to do with it. So enjoy, uh, and I'll, uh, I'll talk to you another time.